everybody, welcome to another Harden Scales video. And this is one, it's pretty special. We're playing Lux Nozzles, which is the renowned creator of Blue Green Scales. And I would say he is among the most creative uh, Harden Scales people. He is the push the archetype in a different direction, a direction that I normally don't go <laughs> towards because I feel that it's a bit lost in the sauce, but um, it's strong. It does do some powerful stuff and it has some specific goals and, and this version is blue green scales so i don't right here was also he's made this list which is called uh is it blue green scales with mishra's bubble a very interesting mana base extremely interesting mana base with mr rainforest otawada stomping around two yamimaya ghosts i mean it, this is just all over the place uh, if there's spell on main deck and this is the only blue spell that is main deck if there's, if there's spell on otawara and then the rest of the deck is kind of like, you know, Welding Jars, Mishra's Bubbles. The reason there's Mishra's Bubbles in the Welding Jars are so many, we pay so many zero drops is because we're playing Metal Rebuke on the sideboard. So the reason to play blue is basically to play Metal Rebuke. Metal Rebuke is a very strong card. Obviously, it's a one mana um, man leak many, many times, especially with your Bubbles and your Welding Jars. And it's extremely strong when your opponent tries to, you know, cast these game ending spells like Creativity um rhinos living end those are the cards that are really this deck is designed to beat so that's why you play format out of dukes and you may you make you bend your deck a little bit to be able to cast them uh, consistently you're playing three autolies uh, for the vases no surprises there these strings he passes so there's not that many concessions he makes other than the mana base being a bit less consistent a bit worse to blood moon to to and you know be more damaging to be able to play blue. So it's actually quite interesting uh, direction to take the deck, in my opinion. I'm not a big fan of it because I really like streamlining the like this that playing the most are the best cards, like four things for Jazz for Passworks, a worker, uh, a lot of utility in my mana base. The only utility in this mana base is Samsung Caverns, basically other than the 40 months for Urza Sagas. And I guess Otawara. Yeah. So it actually has some sort of uh, utility, but the mana is a lot more difficult because you're playing Spy of Industry. And that can cause you some damage, and it can cause you some non-casting skills on turn one. And on the sideboard, we're playing four nature's queens and four natural on one natural state. But this is a concession to hammer time. I think once uh, you, if you are expecting the decks to be to be creativity, hammer time, and any some sort of cascade deck, this deck list makes sense. The way to build the right, you have four abuse for the cascade decks, five is enchant effects for the hammer decks, two orbar for the creativity decks. And then you have the four one mana uh, artifacts that can be used for different matchups. The mission models for the scam decks, relic opportunities, and the heal spells for the graveyard decks. The only way the heal spell is basically like a torpor, no, sorry, like a torment script here that can be, you know, has the deck has like five black sources and gemstone caverns. They can be used to cycle sometimes. So, unlike relic, though, you don't have to hold a mana to exile, so it makes the game a bit more smoother. And then pitting needle. Uh, which is very strong in Jagmoss and other other uh, decks that are relying on accurate abilities. Other than that, not too much going on here. Uh, just, uh, you know, somehow the, the mana base works out. We just have to trust him. He's smarter than all of us. But um, again, yeah, Orbar, in case you don't know, the reason you're playing Orbar is because Argon of Cruelty is very, very popular right now. And when people cast an Argon of Cruelty, they make this card a card. And you know, sacrifice is a creature, and you can you can lose three life, you can get three life. But if you discard Orbar, the old form, uh, you actually can make a copy of a uh, target permanent you want, basically. So you can make a copy of the opponent's archon, which will have an ETB trigger, which will make them sacrifice a creature. It will allow you to draw a card, and it will make them discard a card. And hopefully, they don't have their own Orbar, you know, for an infinite loop there. But this card is very good, for example, when their opponent is able to sneak in a creativity for x equals one because if they're like no battle they have no battlefield left or they have like two creatures like the icon and, and a, a dwarf token then you can make them sacrifice dwarf token you untap you attack with the icon of cruelty make them sacrifice the icon and you know you get pretty ahead instead of very behind uh yeah so this is the deck deck i'll see you in the matches all right it's getting a bit dark but welcome everyone we're playing some blue green harm scales and we're playing against Pere Botelio. This hand is pretty good. We have scales, we have well jars, we have uh, Misty Reinforced. And yeah, we're playing against Burn. So 
All right. I'm going to get hit here for one. Um, now the question is, if I draw a patchwork here, I'm going to hold on with the Walling Jar. If I don't draw a patchwork, I'm going to play the Walling Jar now. This is not a patchwork, so it's very small chance I draw a patch, uh, patchwork next turn. I only have three fetch hooks. It's not a basic. Oh, I didn't get any basic. Nice basic one. I mean, this is not the worst basic land, actually. It's kind of like... Uh... Oh, I didn't play my Walling Jar like a, like a Goon, so I got distracted for a second. Uh, that was a mistake. I'm very sorry. I was looking at the art on my... I was looking at the art, right? You know, you know how it works, right? You just look at art and you get distracted by, you know, by the beautiful mm, slash. Okay, this is good. So we can play, uh, we can play a three threes of us, but this is going to reef bolt it. We can play a hang of luck. And yeah, so I think what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to play a hang of a walker. I'm gonna play Welling Jar. It could be better to play Zavas and Welling Jar it, but I'm kind of planning on on blocking with one, with the tokens this turn because this turn is probably gonna be a big turn for my opponent, right? So they're just targeting me. Uh, don't don't always yield to your opponent's monster stage three spear. Burn's been very popular lately, which is kind of funny. Blue red green is a lot better in burn. You guys can still see me. Red. Wow, this is abundance just going. Um, so I'm gonna tend to just have, I think I just need to block. I don't know if I want a welding jar though. I think I'm not gonna welding jar though. So. Yeah, shoot. Man, my opponent just bolted me this game. Let's say the one man damage we took from the fetch land will matter. At least we were not the play and we didn't like fetch up or something like that. Bore of Charmy. Alright. So we had six life basically. We we just we're gonna be at very low life total. And I think we just need to accept this. Just gonna do this and pass. Um oh. Mm hmm. So we play skills instead of us. It's not lethal. So we kind of have to hope my opponent does not have. Uh... So I play a ravager here. If I had sack, would it have been lethal? Like just it would have been four. No, it would have not been lethal. So let me go ahead and hit my opponent here for two, and I will sacrifice the hangover post combat. So I can have enough blockers. So my opponent has a bolt here. There was an argument maybe for blowing up the Sunday Canyon with a with a Vosage, right? Maybe. But I don't think that's a very winning line. I'm getting a bit dark here, not turn on the light. That's a goblin guide. I just dead. I was just dead. Okay. I wanna have an insane hand. Yeah, we're not winning here, so Okay, one had a very strong hand and they got us. That's just life. Uh I think we won all the Aegis Queens against Burn. Seems a nice thing. We can cut the Steering's the Misha's Bubbles. I don't know, Misha's Bubble looks very bad against Burn. I think you're making an animation module, leave one bubble in, just something to like clean. Either spell them also doesn't look very good. I don't know what else to win. I'll just leave this. Yeah. Okay, we could have won this game and my brother had to not have a like if they just had the goblin guide and then they redrew, we could have won this game easily, but Alright, the sun is very good, so let's keep it. Um, I'm not gonna, um, I'm, uh, does it make any sense to like bubble trick me? No. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get a forest and I'm gonna hold the, the bubble just in case I maybe draw a, 
I could draw a patchwork on the mountain, right? I could, of course, pop the bubble. So the Fetland didn't hurt us, actually. It's a good thing that he at least plays a forest. Patchwork? We don't even need to crack the bubble, we could just kind of play it. And if we draw a land, we can just win next turn. But we're gonna play Hangabug and the bubble. Um, vale. Alright, you go. <clears throat> Sim Blaze. Not sure. Should I block? It's only two damage. I'm pretty sure I can be faster than them. Especially if I draw land here. I do draw land. Um, can I kill them here? I sack sack. Is a 6-6. Six, 6-7. Six, six, no, it's not lethal, but it will be next turn, so. Yeah. I doubt they can kill me from here. I mean, they will need like triple wall. Mm. The deadling mass. Smash to smithereens. Alright, so we sack, put it here. We have Candace here, Candace here. Maybe Bolt here in response. <clears throat> Maybe not. We don't take the three. This is a cool start art. Like a golem just destroying things. I love it. I kind of love this, you know, this kind of raw cards. Um, and my opponent. Oh, oh. Um, I'm not sure what should I do here. May they play. Skewer the critics, me. Sure, I mean, my one is dead. Um, oh, I have the wrong artist to leave from. This is a disaster, people. All right. Let's maximize the counters. It's always beautiful. Do so, right? I'm not gonna I'm gonna play around that shot just in case. That'll be a disaster if I Did I have a feeling that MTG works better now than it used to? You know this is the difference between being play and drawing this matchup. It's so important to be on the play. You see like turn four is our kill and also their kill, right? So uh I guess I can just play the Mishu's Bubbles. Sure. I don't love this. I'm not sure if it's... But, yeah. I'm not, like, super excited. Okay, that's a... I mean, sure. I'll keep this. And play this. Ex Exile. May exile this. This co yeah, this cost me zero life. This cost me at least one life, right? Let's just exile the mystery first. 
So we can play Tom one Hangovac here. Be happy. It's not a great hand. Maybe I should not have kept it. Golden Guides. Or the Saga is a lot better. <laughs> Makes this hand a lot better. So we make the Saga. We're just gonna play a Hangover Walker to have blocksers. And we're gonna pass. We still have the claim. By Islet. That's our fifth land. So Monastery Sea Spear. We're gonna block here. I'll spike me. We're definitely blocking the Goblin Guide. Make an adopter. Sure. So we're just gonna I think we're just gonna make a construct here. We could play a Valista, block and claim it. <clears throat> nah, we're just gonna we're just gonna pass here. I'm gonna be a bit thoughtful here, right? Because um, two, three. Oh, they attack only with the Goblin Guide. Alright. In case they have Triple Bolt, we're going to Welling Jar. In case they have Triple Bolt here, we go down to 9. Should I just try to block here with the Construct? They may play a Seam Blaze in response. Not so good. Um... Mm, one, two, three. So this would be a four, four. It's not lethal. I could just block with the doctor, make a construct. I think I kind of want to block. Maybe I just block with the doctor, make a construct enough turn. <laughs> they can Searing Blaze it, but... No spells being casted here. Alright. My bottom does not have a Searing Blaze. I'm, for sure. I'm gonna get a drum here. I think that's the best um, way of actually not cluttering my hand so much. So we could we could like attack with this guy. Kind of like this. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have as much as Mithrins here. But I can, if I can claim it, we'd be very happy. Um, mm, yeah. I'm going to fetch this. I'm pretty sure that it's going to crack this fire eyelid, right? Shocks. Interesting. Oh my god, it's lying in Helix. They have two cards in hand. Sure. Mm. This is a very close game. We're at 10 life. If they have uh, four, three balls, and they just drop them. That's a spine bandage stack. Good, good news. No attacks. All right. Good for us. Sage is also good for us. Um, <clears throat> so, who's going to hit them here? Mm -mm. 
Deflecting bomb on who? <clears throat> Targets that guy. Let's go to blockers. With this person, they take five. You still have a nature's claim and they have one card in hand. That's the thing with the uh, Ravager, so strong in this deck. I have two cards in my opponent's, three cards in my opponent's hand. They play a land. Lava Spike us. Um, Roiling Boris, why do you bring this card against fields? I think you have to play that, keep Rolling Boris deals one damage to them. Whenever a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast a spell, Rolling Boris deals five damage to the player. Your opponent can get life this turn, but they are like tapped out of colors, so it's fine. Wow. So, I mean, we can just take this, right? And win the game next time. Uh, we just take this. It's three, we go to four, we take one. Okay, maybe the safest is actually to block. Block plus welding jar. You just need to remember not to cast a welding jar or a. Take one damage here. Alright guys, so we did it. Uh, we beat the burn. Game one, you know, they had everything, we still got there, but you know, the nature's claim means that the deflecting post board, I think this matchup is a lot about either not dying super quick, which you can avoid by playing blockers. And you can avoid by playing blockers, basically. That's a kind of like number one priority. Obviously, Jameson can't help a lot there. That's why this hand, even though it was not super great, he had clean. And then it really resolved a lot around Deflecting Palm. Deflecting Palm is like the best card against us post board in my opinion. But then you need to take advantage of Zabaz, take advantage of Unity's Claim, and take advantage of Ravager to make sure that it never resolves. I lost the game in Lanolinus Copenhagen because I didn't play around Deflecting Palm. And you know, your opponent is going to be cutting some amount of bolts for it. And then it's smart to realize that it's harder for them to kill you actually if you don't commit to a Deflecting Palm, right? So, um, but yeah.
it was a it was a close game. I think this last game, but you know, with the claim and everything, just had enough blockers all the time. I think the key point here was when I blocked with the doctor and I left the construct leaf. I got traded my construct for the goblin guide, but the goblin guide didn't do any more damage to me. And the doctor was fine, but it was it's better to actually have a construct than a doctor, right? And if my opponent has seeing blades, then we okay we. <laughs> We do lose the, we lose both, but you know they will, we will probably lose them anyway, right? So, um, I I like the idea of blocking there because at some point we're at six life here. We could have gone down to four life. If this was a rolling vortex, it was not a rolling vortex. It was a it was a bolt. We go to one life, and then you know they could sneak in one point of damage easily. If they had attacked, for example, that turn with the monastery spear, then that point of damage is there, right? So if I don't block the goblin guy with the top third there, it could be that in the end I lose. One important thing this game, game is that I didn't take any damage from my lands. That's why I put the mystery in forest. I exile the mystery in forest with the with the gemstone cavern and I kept the Javi Maya codes because you can tap them without taking any damage. I think that's also important to realize. But yeah, this just played that like a regular skills deck against burn. You just kind of defend, defend, defend. Um, they had a pretty strong stuff, but we we're on the play, right? No, sorry, we we're on the draw, but we were able to steal the play with Johnson Caverns. This is why this card is so just so just faster. You should play it. Just the matchups are so much. Sometimes are so much around play draw. Just having this ability to just steal the play from your opponent is incredibly strong. And you know, in general, I think we, you know, my opponent just drew one, two, three bolts, right? This whole game, and they drew four lands, five lands. So they drew a bit too many lands and a roiling vortex. If this had been two bolts, maybe we would have lost. But of course it's hard to tell because if that those are bolts, we also have a nature's claim, right? So if these are two bolts, we go down to four and we're still alive, right? So the nature's claim was really key here. I didn't want to shoot it just randomly, just to gain the four life, because um I only have one I mean I have one way to sacrifice my stuff to the, the, the reflecting bomb. One other thing is that if you're putting deflecting bombs uh, a walking ballista, you can always Ping your opponent once, and then you will take one damage, and then the rest of the damage will go through. So it's pretty important to to know that as well. So overall, yeah, the deck felt good. Thanks everyone for watching, and um, we were gonna play a league with blue green skills as the plan for this week, and then I'm gonna play some more random deck like a five power artificer or a red white field vendor deck that I've been working on, and yeah. Or maybe some blue red bridge. Uh, it's a deck I've been meaning to try a lot because it looks really fun. One of those decks, and then we're gonna go back to playing some more hunting skills. So anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.